The Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC, has over the years been reporting on oil and gas funded projects across the country, of which Sekendi Takrade has been a beneficiary. However, talking to residents over here who have this feeling that since Sekendi Takrade is the hub of the oil and gas industry, it deserves more, say they haven't seen much. This is a subject of discussion on News Connect, and I am Akwesi Jen. Well, the name is Loud, Oil City, um, but we're not there yet in terms of impact, in terms of seeing the amenities, in terms of coming to a point where life is better because oil is being exploited in our waters. And so there's much more we still want to see. Yes, some development has taken place, but you see that most of what is going on is either so that it will be easier for the oil and gas companies to do what they have to do, and the route to Atuabo has been done and it's fine. But you realize that it's been done because the gas has to be transported so that it goes out to deliver to other people. But in the region and in our specific communities, what are the real things that are coming to us to, I mean, help us deal with the issues of traffic now, with the issues of increasing rent, with the issues of um, increasing cost of living. These are the things that we want to see so that we know that the region is indeed the oil city. I mean, for you too, I mean, how, how evident is the issue of the oil benefit to you as a Westerner? I think that um, people have been very disappointed with regards to the pace that it has been so far. And um, not much has been done yet, to be very frank with you. Um, there are people who moved into the Western region hoping that, you know, they will benefit from some of these things, but they only come to add on to the, you know, the problem. And it's, it's, it's been very difficult to manage. There's very little to, you know, to show. You, you are within the catchment of Atua Boel and Bele. Uh, for you, have you seen an evidence of the oil, I mean, benefit? <laughs> Nothing. Directly, we're not facing anything or we're not feeling the pinch. Actually, it is compounding more problems. Because if you consider how the place is now looking like, you know, when such activities is going on, it's also invite a whole lot of people into the region. And right now, accommodation alone is a problem in our locality. It is only the survival of the fittest. We don't want the oil to be a curse as other places. It should be a blessing. So at least we should feel it. Not precisely feeling it in your pocket, but in terms of social amenities, schools, good roads, good hospitals. I'm coming from the extreme end where the oil is being uh, produced or whatever. Right now, if there should be an outbreak of any disease or there should be an oil spill, we there are going to suffer most. Thank you. I mean, do, do you, government says it is carrying out oil projects across the country. I mean, and Western region is being given its share. Um, do you see a disconnect with what government is saying and what is actually taking place on the ground? I think yeah, the real challenge is, is with the fact that the people are not consulted in terms of what gets delivered as oil projects. And so the people at the top look on paper, see what exists, and decide what they think is good for us. But I think that if you really want us to own the project, if you really want us to be part of the project, then it is important that the, the process that brings up what becomes which project and which project is implemented has to involve the people who will benefit from it. That way we know this is what we ask for, we are getting it, we know how much it is costing us, we can follow through when the implementation starts. And so if the project which government is speaking of will make meaning to us, then we have to be involved. When they say it in Accra, you living down there would want to go and verify and probably it's a different thing, you know. But um, I think that um, the channels haven't been used very properly. Um, as my brother said, there are district assemblies everywhere, you understand. And every district assembly has what we call a medium-term development plan. The plan is supposed to be, you know, done in a consultative manner. So when you have this document lying at the district assembly, 
all that you can do is to fall on that document to tap out projects for that catchment area. So if you are bringing an, uh, I mean, an oil project to that particular catchment area, you fall on the assembly. Okay, this community, what is their priority? From their plan, we'll be able to give you what their priorities are. We should also think that we should can be involved. So that we can send uh, questionnaires out to know the people around that community, their problems, so that we can resolve for them. What do we want, what do we want to see as Westerners before we can be convinced as true beneficiaries of the oil and gas resources? I, I don't know how long you've, you've lived in Second Data Credit, but if you, if you spoke to those who have been long here, they'll tell you that in the days of the railway and the active harbour, these two industries ran the city. And, and it was a reason why other people would come here and work, because the harbour was effective, the railway is effective. So that if railway is functioning now, the railway industry alone, the number it takes in, I know recently they've, they've started a school which is supposed to train people and blah, blah, blah. If we can dedicate funds to these things and see to their completion. You mean all your money? Yes. To railways? I mean, if, if it would take us there. Um, I think Western region has, uh, if not <laughs> the poorest roads in the country. You understand? Um, we have a few good roads, but um, most of the roads leading to the various communities are in very terrible condition. Um, if we can't even do anything, by the time we are done with this oil turn, all the roads in the western region, I mean leading to the major communities at least, should see some, some improvement. So at the end of the day, you know that, okay, when the oil came, we were able to improve our roads. Do you think I mean, oil discovery and its exploitation from our shores has made the western region, for that matter, Sagrinta Krade, life over here much difficult or much better? I think it, 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 it has been rather difficult, okay, because now rent in Takrade is, is a major thing. And it's not even Takrade alone. Go to the Atuabu area, you understand? Landlords are waiting for, you know, oil companies or the big, big companies to come and rent their places, you understand? An individual, you go, they'll tell you that, no, you don't have money. I'm charging in dollars, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. A community like Atuabo, mm -hmm. you are there charging dollars. How is that possible? Mm -hmm. You understand? So, I mean, it's just making life unbearable and people are coming in from other regions and it is just adding on to the problem. And for you, I mean, you too. I think it's a mixed bag. Um, depending on where you were before the oil, <laughs> and how you positioned yourself. Because like he was mentioning, for the halves, he has an apartment, he improves it. The guys who are in the oil and gas industry can afford it, so they can buy it. New banks have come. The people who have come to work there need apartments. He has a house, he rents, so he's making more money. But for the, the people who did not have before and could not position themselves before, now you need to move out of that apartment where you are paying, say, 30 CDs. Because now they are charging 100 and now 150 CDs. Mine is worse than the word West itself. You see, the percentage allocated to the Western region is nothing to write to me about. It is small. How much is it? It's about 10%. At least it could have been, it could have been 15 or 20%. That would have at least solved much of the problems or most of the problems we have in our locality. If you see social vices, what is going on now? And this, those who throw down to our area, if you go to our area, uh, teenage pregnancy is now on the rise. What residents of Sekhani are basically calling for is an effective utilization of the oil money for them to have an evidence of oil project within the environment to merit the oil city status they are actually living now. This has been News Connect from Sekenita Krade, and I am Akwesi Ejenim.